You will have challenges we overcome. But even today, I had challenges. And I was working on this word today as well. And those challenges give me further inspiration to have faith in Jesus. Whatever comes your way, whatever the devil throws at you, have faith in Jesus because we know he's the overcomer we are his offspring and we are able to withstand the words of the devil whatever comes before us we have on that armor of God and we'll be able to withstand what is hurled against us so having this faith in Jesus we will be able to overcome all obstacles. As we all know, Christmas is coming pretty soon. And this is when we celebrate the birth of our Savior. Amen? However, people celebrate it in other ways by thinking that this is when you have a lot of parties and you do a lot of drinking. But we know the real reason for this season. Because our God is a faithful God. And we have to trust him and we have to continue to be committed to him. Hebrews 11.1 1. No faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So, faith is a substance of things we hope for. You know, in life, we want to um, excel. We want to live right. We want to have all the necessities of the world. But we have to have that by faith. Yes, we're going to go through some struggles, but once we have Jesus in our heart, we will be able to overcome. So, continue to have that faith in Jesus, because he is the reason why we are here. Our God wants us to recognize that faith is confidence in his promises. God has a lot of promises for us. And for we to receive those promises, we got to be true believers. We have to be true worshipers. We have to continue to have that faith in Jesus Christ, who is Lord and our Savior. And by that, he will do what he promised every time that he has for us. So when we live by faith, the will of God will be our guide. Hebrews 11, 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So that passage states that you have to believe strongly in our God. You have to believe in Jesus because once you lay all before him, once you confide in him, our God, Jesus, who is our savior and our redeemer and our sanctifier, will reveal the pleasures of heaven for us. I'm just going to zero in on the faith of Jesus. Remember the promises of God will be our assurance. The promises of God will be 
or assurance. I'm going to take us back to the creation of Jesus. Remember the angel Gabriel. He went to Mary. He was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth. He told her that she is highly favored by God and that the Holy Spirit will come upon her and she will have the Christ child. But Mary, who is a god fearing woman, she was scared at first. But by her faith, by her faith, she was able to believe that what God is doing was a good thing because she was going to be the virgin mother of the most high God who is Jesus our Savior. And even an angel went to Joseph. He was her, who we call Espo's husband, and told him what he has to do. The lady that he's going to marry, she's going to carry the Christ child. And he, being a carpenter, has to be there to support her. So we here in the church, husbands and wives, through the faithfulness of God, There was a decree in Galilee that they were supposed to pay taxes. So, Joseph, having loved his wife, and a new coming child, they left and they went to Bethlehem. It's because of their faith. They went to Bethlehem. As, but as they arrived in Bethlehem, there was no room in the inn. There was no room in the inn. God, who is a faithful God, still provided a place for them, what we call the stable, where our Lord and Savior, he was born in the major. So despite any room in the inn, God still provided for them so that there will be a place that the Christ child will be born. And he was born in that manger. But even going on from that, remember there were shepherds who were tending their sheep. These men were fearful men. And what occurred next? was that as they were attending that flock, they prayed unto them and told them that the Christ child, who is going to be the Lord and Savior, he is going to be born in Bethlehem. So the angels told them they have to go See this Christ child. And the glory of God came down. They were a bit afraid, but they were faithful men. We call them, these, these three wise men, they were faithful. And they 
were called loving men. So they packed up their belongings and they journeyed towards Bethlehem to see who is this king, who is this savior. And as they arrived into Bethlehem, they were able to see the Christ child. They were able to speak to the mother, the father, and they told him what has transferred. And they came to give him gifts. They came to worship him. They came to praise him because he is the Lord and Savior. Luke 2, 8 to 20. And the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen. Yeah. And they were in the same kind of shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone around about them, and they were so afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was a with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. And it came to pass, as the angels were going away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord has made it known unto us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known about the same which was told them concerning the child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as they were told unto them. So as I indicated, they received the message that the Christ child is going to be born in Bethlehem in a major. And without haste, because of their faith, they responded. They responded to what was told by them. Because they wanted to bless this child, reverence him. And glorify him because of who he is. So that is why we have to approach this strong with grace. Seek and we know that we will find. So Jesus now grew up. So I'm going to talk about the miracles of Jesus. By having faith in him. John 2, 1 to 11. And the third day, there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee. And the mother of Jesus was there. Verse 2. And both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus said unto him, They have no wine. Jesus said unto her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? My hour is not yet come. His mother said unto the servants, Whatsoever he said unto you, do it. And there were set there six water pots of stone, 
after the manner of the purifying of the Jews, containing two or three firkins apiece. Jesus said unto them, Fill the water pots with water, and they filled them up to the brim. And he said unto them, Draw no, and bear unto the governor of the feast, and they bear it. When the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine, and knew not whence it was, but the servants which drew the water knew, the governor of the feast called the bridegroom and said unto him, Every man at the beginning does set forth good wine. And when men have well drunk, then that which is worse, but thou hast kept the good wine until now. This beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee and manifested forth his glory and his disciples believed on him. So, by Jesus, by having faith in Jesus, his mother knew of his potential. So, at that marriage feast, the wind has gone. So, she called upon her son. But Jesus, who is a faithful God, who is kind, who is loving, he made sure that that festivity, that marriage, will still go on. And he gave certain instructions. So that is why when we read our Bible, there are certain instructions in there for us to follow. Because the faithfulness of God, the kindness of God, his love, and his strength, that is what will keep us on this journey. John 4, 46 to 54. So Jesus came again into the king of Galilee, where he made the water wine. And there was a certain nobleman whose son was sick at Capernaum. When he heard that Jesus was come out of Judea into Galilee, he went on to him and besought him that he would come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. Then Jesus said unto him, Except you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. The nobleman said to him, Sir, come down, ere my child die. Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy son liveth. And the man believed the word that Jesus had spoken unto him, and he went his way. And as he was now going down, his servants met him and told him, saying, Thy son liveth. Then and great he of them, the hour when he began to amend. And they said unto him, Yesterday, at the seventh hour, the fever left him. So the father knew that it was at the same hour in which Jesus said unto him, Thy son liveth, and himself believeth, and his whole house. This again, the second miracle that Jesus did when he was come out of Judea into Galilee. So, brothers and sisters in Christ, when we have a problem, when we have something that is troubling us, call upon Jesus. Brothers and sisters in Christ, when we have something that is troubling us, call upon Jesus. Because of our faith, when Jesus hears us, Jesus will give us the answer that we desire. All you have to do is believe, trust in him, and God will come true. Because he said that he will not fail you or he will not forsake you. Just call upon him and he will give you the answers that you so desire. John 5, 1 to 15. After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem, but the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue, Bethsaida, having five porches. And these lay a great multitude 
of impotent foe, of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first, after the troubling of the water, stepped in, was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. A certain man was there which had that infirmity thirty and eight years. When Jesus saw him lying and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he said unto him, Will thou be made whole? The impudent man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another step down before me. Jesus said unto him, Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. And immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. The Jews therefore said unto him that was cursed, It is the Sabbath day. It is not lawful for thee to carry thy bed. He answered them, He that made me whole, the same said unto me, Take up thy bed and walk. Then asked they him, What man is that which said unto thee, Take up thy bed and walk? And he that was he wist not who it was, for Jesus had conveyed himself away a multitude in that place. Afterwards, Jesus went with him in the temple and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole, sin no more, lest a worse thing come unto thee. The man departed and told the Jews that it was Jesus which made him whole. So, Jesus, in his journey, he is a healer. So, when we have pain, we call upon fearful God. We call upon Jesus. Because when he rests his hands upon us, wherever that hurt is, wherever that pain, Jesus, who is a fearful God, he will heal us of all infirmities. John 6, 1 to 15. So, after these things, Jesus went over to the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. And a great multitude followed him, because they saw his miracles, which he did on them that were diseased. And Jesus went up into the mountain, and there he sat with his disciples. And the Passover, a feast of the Jews, was nigh. When Jesus then lifted up his eyes and saw a great company come unto him, he said unto Philip, When shall we buy bread that these may eat? And this he said to prove himself, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, Two hundred penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may take a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter, brother, said unto him, There's a lad here, which have five barley loaves and two small fishes. But what are they among so many? And Jesus said, May the men sit down. Now there was much, such, now there was much grass in the place. So the men sat down and numbered about 5,000. And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed to the disciples and the disciples to them that were set down, and likewise of the fishes, as much as they would. When they were filled, he said unto his disciples, Gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. Therefore, they gathered them together and filled twelve baskets with the fragment of the five barley loaves 
which remain over and above unto them that had eaten. Then those men, when they had seen the miracle that Jesus did, said, This is of a truth that prophet that should come into the world. When Jesus therefore perceived that they would come and take him by force to make him a king, he brought again into the mountain himself alone. So Jesus is a provider. Jesus is a person who looks out for your well-being. Even though we might be struggling, tell it to Jesus. Regardless of what the situation is, whether it's financial, um, spiritual, even social, tell it to Jesus because Jesus is the answer. Jesus is the way maker and Jesus will provide for each and every one of us, no matter what the situation is. It might seem hard. You might be seeing this struggle. I have to go over a mountain. But the faithfulness in Jesus will overcome all situations. Hallelujah. Amen. John 9, 1 to 12. And Jesus passed by. He saw a man that was blind from birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did send this man or his parents that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither hath this man seen nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. I must work the works of him that sent me. While it is day, the night cometh when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle, and he anointed of the blind man with the clay, and said unto him, Go, wash in a pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation saint. He went his way, therefore, and washed and came seen. The neighbors, therefore, and David before had seen him that he was blind, said, Is not this he that sat and begged? Some said, This is he. Others said, He is like him. But he said, I am he. Therefore said they unto him, How were thine eyes open? He answered and said, a man that is called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and said unto me, go to the pool of Siloam and wash. And I went and washed and received sight. Then said they unto him, where is he? He said, I know not. So, saints of God, once again, our Jesus is a miracle working God. No, no matter what situation comes, Jesus will be there to bring us out. Jesus will be there to lift us up. Jesus, he will carry us on this journey. So we have to continue to have faith. Right, we have to continue to have faith because this man was blind and Jesus who is the Savior, saw him because he said the sin was not his or his parents. But Jesus, who is the healer, came there, saw the faith of the man and spoke to him and gave him instructions. So when we come to Jesus and he gives us instructions, we have to follow those instructions. Because if we want to be successful on this journey we have to obey the word of God we have to listen to what he tells us and as he as we read his word we will receive all those benefits all those promises that are due to us because we have the faith in Jesus amen 
John 6, 16 to 21. And when even was now come, his disciples went down onto the sea and entered into the ship and went over the sea towards Capernaum. And it was no dark, and Jesus was not come to them. And the sea arose by reason of a great wind that blew. So when they had rowed about five and twenty or thirty furlongs, they see Jesus walking on the water and drawing night onto the ship. And they were afraid. But he said unto them, It is I, be not afraid. Then they willingly received him into the ship, and immediately the ship was at the land whither they went. So what this story is telling that as we go through our journey and storms come before us, we know that when a storm comes, it don't last forever. The storm comes, when the eye pass, it's a little quiet, and then you get more wind. But storms don't last forever. Troubles don't last forever because we have a fearful God who is Jesus. So as we call upon Jesus, he will bring us out. He will carry us. We know that he is our fortress. And we know that he is our strong tower. He will continue to protect us. He will continue to have those angels encamp around and about us. So that is why we have to be fearful in Jesus. We have to remain fearful. We have to remain rooted and grounded in Jesus because he is the solid rock. He is the anchor that we hold on to because when that anchor is grounded in the sand, it is unmovable. Nothing can move it. The only person that can move it is Jesus himself. And when you are tied to him, everything is safe and secure. So we have to have that faith. We have to be rooted and grounded in him. And we have to be strong. We have to be strong by our faith. John 11. I'll start to read from verse 17. Then when Jesus came, he found that he had laid in the grave for four days already. I'm here speaking about his friend Lazarus. Because Jesus loved Lazarus, his sister Martha. And Lazarus had died. But Jesus was another part of the, the land. So... As word got out to him that Lazarus had died, Jesus, who is a fearful God, stated that, have no fear. He is just asleep. He is just asleep because Lazarus was his friend. But Jesus will come and see what's going on. Right, so now Bethany was nigh unto Jerusalem about 15 furlongs off. 19. And many of the Jews came to Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary sat still in the house. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou will ask of God, God will give it thee. Jesus said unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. As I indicated, Lazarus is just sleeping. So we have to continue to be fearful. Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. So we have to believe in Jesus because he is the way to the celestial city. So once we 
believe in Jesus, once we have that faith in Jesus, and we continue on this journey, we shall reach that celestial city, 27. She said unto him, Yea, Lord, I believe thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which shall come into the world. And when she has so said, she went her way and called Mary, her sister, strictly saying, The Master is come and calleth for thee. As soon as she heard that, she arose quickly and came unto him. Now Jesus was not yet come into the town, but was in that place where Martha met him. The Jews, then which were referred in the house, and comforted her when they saw Mary, that she rose up hastily and went out, followed her, saying, She go on the grave to weep there. Then when Mary was come where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying unto him, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother had not died. When Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews also weeping which came with her, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled, and said, Where have you laid him? They said unto him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. Then said the Jews, Behold how he loved him. And some of them said, Could not this man which opened the eyes of the blind have caused that even this man should not have died? Jesus therefore again groaning in himself, cometh to the grave. It was a cave and a stone laid upon it. Jesus said, Take ye away the stone, Martha, the sister of him that was dead, said unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he hath been dead four days. Jesus said unto her, Said I not unto thee, that if thou would believe, thou shouldst see the glory of God? Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. And I knew that thou hearest me always, but because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. And when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes. And his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus said unto them, Loose him and let him go. Then many of the Jews which came to Mary and had seen the things which Jesus did believe on him. So this miracle of raising Lazarus from the dead was so spectacular because he was dead for at least four days. But by their faith in Jesus, they believe that he is a worker, working God. And he did that. He not only showed Martha and her sisters, but he showed the Jews who he is. He's the son of God, but he's also a faithful God. He's able to overcome all obstacles. Once we put our trust in Jesus, once we continue to believe in him, we will be overcomers. We will be overcomers. Amen? So faith in Jesus is essential for salvation. It allows us to receive God's righteousness, to overcome temptations, and endure challenges. Remember, having faith in Jesus is having that confidence in him and trusting him as your Lord and Savior and Redeemer. We believe in his power. We believe in his intelligence. And we believe in his love. So we must continue to center our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. To have faith in Jesus, to have such trust in him that we obey whatever he commands us. As we place our faith in Jesus Christ, we become obedient disciples. So, saints of God, I implore us as we continue on this life journey in this Christendom, continue to be true believers, continue to be true worshipers, 
Continue to be faithful in Jesus because he who will bring you out, he is who will deliver you, and he will carry you toward that city. So I implore each and every one of us, continue having faith in Jesus. Thank you. If you do not have a local assembly, feel free to join us for an exhilarating time of worship. Our services are Sunday morning at 10 a.m., Sunday evening, healing and deliverance at 6.30 p.m. Join us in prayer on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. and for Bible study on Thursdays at 7 p.m. Bless fellowship and enjoy. The simplicity of the gospel.